Despite the fact I'm about as photogenic as Steve Buscemi, my beautiful wife still wanted to get some family portraits done. We had quite a few pictures taken, and some of them turned out really good. However, there was one picture that stood out from the rest, and so we had it printed out on a large 30 by 20 canvas, and we wanted to hang it on the wall, but it really needed a frame to show it off. So I had this idea. Not like my inflatable dartboard idea, this is a good idea. I created this mock-up to see if I could make a frame that would not only make the canvas stand proud of the frame, but it would also make it appear to float within it. I posted this out on my Instagram feed, along with the winning lottery numbers, to see what people thought and if they had any recommendations. Someone much smarter than me posted a comment saying to use Shaosugi Ban for the dark color. And at first I thought, well, this is just a big typo, but I googled it just to make sure. Turns out, Shosugi Ban is a Japanese technique for preserving and coloring wood by burning the surface of it. So this is what I'm going to try today. I'm going to make a picture frame, and then I'm going to set it on fire. I read that traditionally, Shosugi Ban is mainly used for cedar siding, but lately it's become quite popular with trendy folks because of the cool look, and, and then again with the pyromaniacs because of all the burning. I found this 4x4 cedar post in my miscellaneous lumber pile and I figured this would be perfect for this project. The first step is to rip it in half at the table saw and I do this by just setting my blade a smidge taller than half the height and running the post through twice. Once I had it cut in two, I could then get out the planer and dimension each of the halves to their final thickness. I had my calipers preset to the desired thickness so I just kept feeding the boards through until I finally could fit the calipers over one of the ends. Next, it was time to make some cedar ribbons by trimming off one of the edges. And then after I did this, I could flip the board around, reference the clean cut edge against the fence, and then cut it down to its final width. And then shot buddy number one wanted to come in and clean the floors. I'll never say no to that. Now I could start to make the cuts to form the rabbits for the frame. I start by making my first cut about a half inch in. Then once that's done on both boards, I nudge the fence over 1 8 inch, which is the curve of the blade. And then I make another cut, so the rabbit ends up being about a quarter inch wide. Then I raise the blade and basically do it again to make the second rabbit. Now since it's too dangerous to move the fence any closer to the blade, I just flip the board around and make the final cleanup cuts the other way. Shop Buddy 2 wanted to come in and see what was going on. And I tell you, he could not care less that he's in the way or that he's laying in a pile of sawdust. In fact, right after he's done annoying me here, he'll probably go upstairs and pee on my pillow. Again. I cut all the 45s on the miter saw, and once I got the lengths perfect for one of the tops and sides, I just lined them up flush with another piece and traced the edge so that I could get a perfect pair. Glue up is pretty straightforward and even easier if you have one of these band clamps. It's definitely worth the investment if you plan on making a bunch of rectangles in your shop. I put some additional clamps on each of the corners just to help keep everything flush while it all dried. So now it's five seconds later and everything is completely dry and I can take off all the clamps. Then I can take the frame over to the table saw where I have a spline jig set up. I used my original mock-up piece as a stop block and then just clamped the frame right to it. I set the blade up pretty high so I could get a decent sized groove cut in. I figure this is a pretty large frame and the more I can reinforce these corners the better. I jammed a strip of maple into the grooves and then traced out some triangles, making sure to give myself some slop. Then over at the bandsaw I can cut those out. Now glue them into place. And when they're dry, I take things back to the bandsaw and I just trim off the excess. Now this didn't get them exactly flush, so I just used a hand plane to make everything perfectly smooth. Next, I doused myself with gasoline and headed to the garage to light this thing up. From what I read, you can achieve different looks in the wood based on how you burn it. You can go for a light touch to achieve a darker color with accented grain lines, or you can go all the way to scorched earth where you can get a real dark color and even get what's called a gator skin look to the surface. I figured I'd go for something on the lighter side since this is my first try. Overall, the process didn't take all that long at all. 
and my neighbors only called the cops on me once so that's good now if you wanted you could just oil and seal this now and call it finished however i don't want the soot coming off in the house and i also wanted to see how it looked underneath it all i took a wire brush and went around the frame brushing off all the soot and the grain really popped out but it turned the color from a rich black to more of a dark brown so I ran an experiment on a test piece and I really found this interesting. This section here is the brushed Shosugi Ban and you can see it darkens the rings of the grain but not so much the growth in between. Over here I put on some penetrating ebony wood stain. Here you can see it darkens the growth but not the rings. And lastly this section is both. It's the color we wanted, but it also has some kind of cool shimmer that highlights the lines of the grain. So I brushed on a thin coat of stain, and then I immediately wiped it off with a rag. This seemed to darken the growth wood very well without affecting the grain lines all that much. Then I sprayed on several coats of water-based poly to seal everything up, and then very lightly sanded between coats to knock down any imperfections. Then I could bring the picture in so that I could mount it to the frame. I tried to think of a clever way to do this where I could make the picture removable, but then it occurred to me that I just don't care. So I hammered in some small brad nails through and into the wooden frame that the canvas is stretched over. I measured out and placed a couple sawtooth hangers and then pounded them into place. And lastly, a couple rubber pads to protect the wall. But just look how this turned out. It has a very three-dimensional look and feel to it. Now keeping in mind that my IQ is barely above room temperature, the best I can make of it is that since the growth wood is much less dense than the rings, it was burned down and scraped off from the Shosugi Ban process. And this left the grain standing proud. And the gloss of the poly adds just the right amount of shimmer to really bring out and highlight that grain. The extra rabbit within the frame does a great job at making the canvas look like it's floating, and it actually adds an element of depth as it looks like the picture goes back into the frame. And I wasn't sure about this, but I'm glad I left the knots in. They sure do add some character and interest, not to mention some cool grain patterns. And now I can put it up on the wall. And there you have it. A floating picture frame treated using the Japanese Shosugi Ban technique. I think it turned out pretty darn good. And I didn't even burn down the house. Well, that's it for this one. I hope you liked it, and we'll see you next time. <sighs> hey, it's Doug from DN Handcrafted. He's a cool guy. Make sure you go follow him. Uh, what's he got to say? Oh, he's making me new logos. All right, check this out. Let's look at it together. What does this do? Oh, no, that's cool. Ha! <laughs> That is too cool. That's awesome. Oh, forgot to tension the blade. What an idiot. So I brushed on a thin coat of stain and then immediately wiped it off with a rag. Hey, will you quit sniffing? Okay, I'm trying to do a voiceover here and you're running around here sniffing and jamming your face into the computer. Do you think that that's helpful? It's not. It's not. Now come over here and let me squeeze your face. Oh yes, come here.